Max Payne 2 is about the newly reinstated NYPD detective seeking closure over the loss of his wife and child. Max reunites with Mona Sachs, and he struggles to overcome feelings of grief and guilt about pursuing her romantically. The pair become embroiled in a conspiracy of death and betrayal, and they must work together to bring down a secret society. In this video, you'll learn how Max Payne 2 follows the same storytelling conventions as blockbuster movies and ancient myths. This hidden structure, called the hero's journey, can help you better understand, appreciate, and even predict stories in the future. And it can help you better understand your own story, improving how you might adapt and grow to the challenges you're facing. The Hero's Journey is a story framework theorized by Joseph Campbell. He studied thousands of ancient myths and discovered that these stories followed a pattern of 12 plot points. He hypothesized that this pattern emerged because all human beings share the same formative psychological moments. Today, The Hero's Journey has been adopted by screenwriters and authors as an aid to plot their stories with notable examples from Pixar and Marvel Studios. The ordinary world reveals the hero before the adventure, illustrating internal and external conflicts. It displays a world that is static yet unstable. Two years after the events of the first Max Payne, Max has escaped conviction thanks to Alfred Woden. He has been reinstated as a New York Police Department detective. However, he is still struggling with the same demons, grief for the loss of his family, alcoholism and pills to cope, and an antisocial personality that prevents any real social relationships. Max has little to live for, and he's simply drifting. That is, until he receives a call to investigate a disturbance at a local warehouse. The call to adventure can sometimes be a coincidence or pure chance. The hero is forced to temporarily recognize that the ordinary world is untenable and the opportunity for a change is introduced. Sometimes the call to adventure can be a figure from the past returning to the life of the hero. Max responds to suspicious activity at a warehouse owned by Vladimir Lem, and he discovers a squad of executioners nicknamed the Cleaners. He witnesses them perform an execution. In a moment of foreshadowing, Max says, quote, Like all bad things in my life, it started with the death of a woman, unquote. Max pursues the Cleaners, and he's surprised by Mona Sachs, who was thought to be dead. She guns down the Cleaners, and before they can reconnect, she escapes through the freight elevator. Mona is a figure from Max's past. They had chemistry in a previous adventure, and Mona, as a professional assassin, is no stranger to brutality. Max feels as though Mona could understand him, and her reappearance represents an opportunity to pursue a meaningful relationship. The hero will reject the call to adventure because he or she recognizes that the road ahead will be difficult. The hero is afraid of the changes and trials that will result from the adventure, and they are reluctant to accept the necessary costs. Max is motivated by avoidance. He drinks and abuses pills to forget his painful past and lost family. Mona's return brings back painful memories. Even worse, Mona has been identified as the main suspect in the murder of Senator Gate who was likely a member of the secret society named the Inner Circle. Mona arrives at Max's apartment while he's asleep, and she tells him they're both targets of an assassination plot put forward by a member of the Inner Circle. However, Max rejects this characterization and uses this as an opportunity to tell her they are not together. He distances himself from Mona to avoid the call to adventure. The Mentor is a character who provides information, guidance, and equipment for the adventure ahead. As mentioned in The Myth of Max Payne, mystery thriller and horror genres will often forego a mentor archetype. This keeps the hero questioning and increases tension. Max cannot rely on another character to provide all the answers. Instead, he has to guess at the motivations and allegiances of each character he meets, 
always second guessing. He's never quite sure who's an ally or an enemy and for good reason. The crossing of the first threshold is often forced by a change in external circumstances. It can be the loss of a safe space, loved one, or item of significance. The hero decides to leave behind the ordinary world and enter the special world, confronting fears and striving to change. However, heroes must confront threshold guardians before entering the special world. At this stage, these guardians need only to be acknowledged. Shortly after refusing the call to adventure, Max narrowly avoids a sniper shot. He discovers that the cleaners have been surveilling his apartment, and this confirms Moda's information. He is the target of an assassination. Max recognizes that the life he was trying to preserve has disappeared. His apartment is burned to the ground, and his life is on the line. In this moment, he chooses to join forces with Mona, and he calls to arrange a meeting. Detective Winterson is the threshold guardian here. Before Max leaves the precinct, Winterson tells him not to do anything stupid, almost as if she knows where he's going. Max acknowledges this warning, but he knows his visit will put him at odds with Winterson and the precinct. The middle portion of the adventure is reserved for tests, allies, and enemies. Tests provide an opportunity for the hero to prove their worth and practice the skills necessary for the adventure ahead. The special world is rife with new characters and the hero must learn who is an ally and who is an enemy. In mysteries and horror stories, allies can be confused as enemies and enemies can be confused as allies. Oftentimes, the greatest tests in these genres involve accurately determining who is an ally. There are a few tests that Max fails. He and Mona attempt to rescue an inner circle contact that Mona knows, but they don't arrive in time and the cleaners execute him. This is a failed lead that prevents Max from confirming Mona's story about the secret society and their history. He's also captured by Winterson, failing to continue his investigation with Mona. Max must confront several enemies. Vladimir Lem is the head of the Russian mob. He and Max forged a relationship in the first Max Payne adventure by swearing a truce to tackle a common enemy. Vlad had become very wealthy as a result of the allegiance. However, it wasn't enough to sate his greed or thirst for power. While Vlad was an ally in previous adventures, he had become an enemy. He had hired the cleaners to eliminate competing crime families and eliminate Max. However, Max wouldn't learn this until much later in the adventure. Valerie Winterson is a detective from Max's precinct. However, she's involved romantically with Lem and she's a double agent. She betrays Max, captures Mona, and serves as Lem's right hand. Alfred Woden is a complicated character. Woden is a member of the Inner Circle, the secret society that's responsible for many atrocities. Payne discovers that Woden secretly sent evidence of Valkyr to Max's wife, an act that inadvertently led to the death of his family. Worried about Max's retribution, Woden may have ordered Mona to kill Max. However, he later apologizes and saves Max from Lem. At times, Woden is an ally and an enemy to Max. Vinny Gogniti had previously worked for the Punchinello crime family. With their downfall, he became an underboss for a different mafia. Vinny and Lem are warring over the weapons black market in the city. Max temporarily allies with Vinny while on his path for retribution against Lem. Mona Sachs is an assassin for hire who has been working for Woden. She has been eliminating other members of the inner circle and she's embattled against Lem. She is a surrogate for Max's future, one where he has closure over his lost family and a future to look forward to. He believes that she will bring him redemption. The most dangerous part of the adventure lies ahead, so the hero makes an attempt to prepare and set their affairs in order. This may involve surveillance, organization, fortification, and romantic courtship. This can also be a time when the hero enters a new special world, 
one with new rules, tests, and characters. The hero may encounter threshold guardians that want to prevent their progress ahead. Max overhears Winterson in the police department, coaching witness testimony against Mona and leaking information over the phone. He begins to suspect Winterson may not be the perfect detective she was thought to be. Max and Mona escape and return to their hideout. They surrender to their romantic impulses, only to be interrupted by the cleaners in a brutal attack. Max has gained perspective on the mystery he has become embroiled in. Max has gained perspective on this ongoing mystery. He's starting to suspect his former allies may be his enemies. He dives into an escaping cleaner's van, knowing it will take him to whoever is responsible for the assassination attempts. During the ordeal, death must seem imminent and inescapable. The hero may die, witness a death, or cause a death. This reflects the death of the hero's ego, a trial they must endure to be reborn as something stronger. The ordeal is typically the central event of the second act, signifying a great change. Max and Mona battle their way through dozens of cleaners at an abandoned construction site, and just as they are about to escape, Winterson stops them at gunpoint. This moment mirrors Max's refusal of the call. He was afraid of siding with Mona because she was a murder suspect. It would have destroyed his reputation at the precinct and his life as a detective. Now, he pulls a gun on Winterson and shoots her, illustrating that he is a changed man. However, Winterson shoots Max with her last breath. He slips into a limbo state as emergency room technicians attempt to keep him alive. In choosing Mona, Max grapples with the grief for his murdered family. He feels guilty about trying to move on. It's worth noting that most modern stories will delay the ordeal and subsequent parts of the hero's journey for the end of the adventure. This structure is called a delayed crisis. The first adventure of Max Payne followed this structure. However, Max Payne 2 takes a more traditional structure, placing the ordeal in the middle of Act 2. The hero began the adventure in search of something. After overcoming death, the hero seizes the reward. In stories that are often crafted for broad audiences, the reward is a physical object, like a sword. However, the reward can be a new perspective, a dispelled delusion, or a new self-realization. Max has a close brush with death that lands him in the hospital. While nurses attempt to stabilize him, he has a dream where he kills his deceased wife for his lover, Mona. He recognizes that he has chosen Mona, but that it felt like he had lost her. Max has been living in a husk of his former life, the same detective in the same city, trying to pretend his family hadn't been murdered years earlier. His choice to shoot Winterson and protect Mona was a realization that he's ready to let go of this former life and start something new. Only, he's been separated from Mona and he needs to find her. On the road back, the hero rededicates himself to the adventure, choosing to return to the ordinary world or stay in the special world. It often marks the transition from Act 2 to Act 3, and the hero will cross another threshold. The adventure sometimes changes focus in this moment. For example, a story about capturing a keystone item may become about escaping imminent danger. Similar to Alan Wake, Max has chosen to stay in the special world. He has shed his former self, he has nothing left to return to. Instead, Max chooses to reunite with Mona, knowing that he must find a way to extricate them from the inner circle and the standing assassination orders. He must defeat Vladimir Lem. The resurrection is the hero's second brush with death. It should be the moment when death is confronted on the greatest scale yet. It's the climax of the story. In western, crime, or action-adventure stories, the resurrection often involves a showdown or shootout with the villain. The hero is often forced to make a sacrifice. 
Max and Mona infiltrate Woden's manor in pursuit of Lem. However, Max uncovers a hidden alliance. Woden's culpability in the murder of Max's family likely motivated him to hire Mona as an assassin. She disarms Max, but she cannot execute him because of their romantic involvement. Her delay allows Lem an open shot, killing Mona. Max is doomed to tragic character arcs, always losing the women he loves. Just as he foreshadowed earlier, he has lost Mona, left only with the self-realization that he can overcome loss, just as he had with his wife and daughter. He resolves to no longer run from his past, instead turning to confront it head on. He defeats Lem in a final shootout, ending the battle between members of the inner circle. Return with the elixir is an even greater reward than the one that followed the ordeal. The hero makes full claim of the lessons learned during the adventure. Sometimes these lessons are tragic. The hero is sadder but wiser, confronting a world that may be random and unfair. The emotional resonance of the adventure should be its strongest at this point. Mona gave Max the revelation that he can confront and survive his past no matter how painful it may be. Even her loss will eventually become a past he can survive. At the end of his adventure, he thanks Mona because she opened his eyes and allowed him to quote, be reborn, unquote. And that's it for the myth of Max Payne 2. Come join me, Super Bowl Pants, on Twitch for live playthroughs. The link is in the description below. If you have questions or requests, please comment them below. And more of the Myth of series can be found right here.